This is FinTech Futures at Cybos, and I'm joined by Apili Srinivasan. How are you? Hi, good. And you? Excellent. I'm very good, thank you. Very good. Are you enjoying the conference so far? Very much so. Great, great, great. So to get started then, would you like to give a quick introduction to yourself and, and your role then? Hi, my name is Upili Srinivasan. You can call me Oops if you're comfortable. I'm the president and COO of IGTB, the Transaction Banking Specialist Division of Intellect Design Arena. I'm based in the US. So you're here giving a talk on the consumerization of commercial banking then. Um, for those who weren't able to watch live, can you tell us a bit more about what you, what you mean by that? So consumerization of commercial banking focuses on the end consumer being the primary driver of product design and services, even for a commercial entity like a commercial bank. That's the theme of it. We distill this down into the six tenets of consumerization and then ask banks a question, is it a distraction to your core agenda or is this a vital lever to use for executing on your core agenda? And that's how it goes. Excellent, excellent. So I guess what particular actions then from consumers are really influencing the strategies of commercial banking? Well? Um, I refer to the six tenets of consumerization, right? So I'll just use a couple of examples of those. Hyper-personalization. Now it's a little intuitive on the retail banking side that you need to have hyper-personalization considered as part of your strategy. In the commercial banking, some banks might take an approach that I'm addressing an enterprise at large, not the individual user of the enterprise. We at Intellect have a slightly different point of view there. The individual user in those enterprises, he or she has a role. The role has KPIs. The person has a persona. So he or she brings elements of those persona while discharging the role. So that's how all of these tie in together. So how have commercial banks then been looking to adapt to these, these changes? If you look at it from a digital strategy standpoint, even at Cybos, you see an overarching theme of customer experience or user experience. That's the intuitive part. Experience will get them in at the door, but then what do you have to offer them at that point, right? The sharp products that you create for those customers, maybe the creative solutions that you assemble by putting products together, those are all examples of how banks can deal with it. We see some banks doing that. Happy to say we work with some of those banks and we, we've got a few other options up our sleeves as well. When we talk to those banks, for example, saying, think of platforms. Don't always think of the bank having to go directly to those enterprises. You could use an, uh, an embedding approach called banking as a service. Those are some of the other options that we recommend to our customers. Excellent. Excellent. I mean, you've mentioned a couple there, but I mean, is, how, how is IGTB looking then to help the, the banks kind of like okay. go above and beyond, I guess? Uh, we recommend to banks to adopt a three-pronged integrated strategy for adopting COCB. The first one is to think contextual. And what does that really mean? look at those personas and understand the stated and unstated needs of those personas and then connect the dots. That's the first step. Once you've done your design, we ask the banks to say, choose the right kind of technology architecture that can deliver to the tenets of consumerization. And we tell banks like, look, all technologies will have to be secure, will have to be open. We are past that stage. But you really have to look at technologies with three key attributes, composability, contextuality, and the last one is called hyperscale, which means having the right kind of data architecture to pre-package data so that you can keep data proximal to where it's going to be consumed so you can kind of provide a friction-free experience even at scale. Once you've done the design of the technology architecture, the third thing is your products and services. And for that, we ask banks to consider individual products, solutions by assembling those products, platforms where you take your own offerings and complement it with a fintech capability from the outside or like i mentioned go direct or embed your capabilities on, on a banking as a, a service construct those are things that uh, we offer to banks excellent excellent and what are some of the main benefits then do you think that you can give banks that work in? Uh, banks typically make their business cases on five key parameters it's revenue growth or revenue protection cost avoidance risk reduction or risk elimination. So it's these five parameters. The entire set of things that I've been talking about, whether it's the technologies, the contextual design, or the product solution platform, banking as a service spectrum, all go towards giving benefits on one or more of these parameters. 
excellent, excellent. I mean, digital transformation in itself is quite a big, a big topic. Yes. And um, what would you say are some of the main kind of areas that banks should be looking at then to focus on? Um, digital transformation for us is what we call digital 360, which is digital outside and digital inside. So to look at tra the transformation piece holistically from both ends of the spectrum, so to say, is important. That would be the overarching message. And then the detail details are what I just described earlier. Excellent, excellent. So what, what do you think the future of banking then looks like then? And what opportunities and use cases are you kind of most excited about? Uh, not a soothsayer. I don't quite know <laughs> whether I can predict the future, but we can see some strong trends. Um, I think there is a strong element of technology as the primary driver kicking in. So if you were to look at the last era, last decade, I think you would call that the decade of banking. I think this decade is the decade of technology in banking, if I were to call it that. So that's one strong theme. So adoption of the right technology, the architecture and so on and so forth. The second key theme is I don't think banks have to think of it as having to go out on their own. I think last decade we saw a bit of debate around are we competing with fintechs? Are we cooperating with fintechs? I think banks have figured that out. But right now, like when we look at new emerging models, every new emerging model brings with it new entities, new players, new configurations, new, uh, new collaboration opportunities. To keep an open mind about all of that is important. So these are the two dominant uh, themes I would think will drive the next 10 years. Excellent, excellent. And what does the, the near term future then look like for IGTB at the moment? And have you got any more developments or partnerships in the pipeline? Yes, uh, we are very excited about some of the stuff that we are doing. Within GTB, uh, we operate in the entire gamut of products that make up GTB, whether it is channel proposition on one side, cash, payments, liquidity management, virtual accounts, sub-accounting, escrow, trade, supply chain. So we are finding opportunities in all of these things. I think the interesting part is, I think banks are now looking at solutions that fill up the space in between these large product blocks. So you have to creatively wire these blocks and you'll see lots of vendors saying, yeah, have the block. Yes, that's necessary. But the ability to wire those blocks together creatively, I think will make the difference. And we are very good at that. So we're very excited uh, uh, at IGTV. Excellent. Sounds good. Sounds good. Well, thank you so much for speaking with us. It's been a yeah, great, great having you along. Thanks for having me. Perfect. Thank you.